am so very grateful for the many people involved with the preservation of the house at Caroncini. By preserving the building, you are doing more than just preserving a physical structure. You are preserving a history of design, a history of the inhabitants, some of which are here today. A history of the city, of war, and of photography. But why do we know about this building and why do we care? There were many buildings that were bombed by German pilots during the Civil War. It was a war fought in part by the new air bombs that indiscriminately targeted cities and civilians. Hundreds of buildings were ruined, crushed beyond recognition and reconstruction. We know this building in part because it was one of the lucky ones, immortalized by the lens of Robert Kappa in November 1936. As he was roaming the city in the days following an air raid, he found children sitting in the sun just in front of the pocked wall of the one-story structure. They seemed to be playing as children do, inventing games, making jokes, freedom from under the scrutiny of the terrorized adults. There is an incongruity between the lightness of the children and the scarring mark of history on the wall behind them. This is exactly what Kappa was quick to recognize. He made not just a document of the building or of the physical mark, but recognized that the violence of war affected the lives of civilians. This is an image of resistance. War and images of war of the 20th century were not just soldiers on a battlefield, but equally about civilians surviving in the chaos. Robert Kappa came to Spain in 1936 essentially as a freelancer because he wanted to make images to show the magazine readers what was happening to Republican Spain. He wanted his photographs to have an impact, to educate and inform. I think he would be deeply humbled that in 2019, his photograph of Peroncelli is a catalyst for the preservation of the building, this event, and this festival. He might equally be amazed that his photograph is exhibited in the mo one of the most renowned institutions of modern and contemporary art. Kappa did not think of himself as an artist and even warned his great friend, the photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson, not to get labeled as a surrealist ph photographer, but to call himself a photojournalist because then he could do what he wanted. For Kappa, creative freedom lay in the field of photojournalism hard political truth, actual events, real stories. While photojournalism was barely recognized by arts and institutions of, in his day, clearly now we all understand the contribution that the best photojournalists have given us to our understanding of history and the world around us. Kappa actually knew Picasso. He photographed him in his Paris studio at the Rue Grand Augustin, September 1944, just weeks after the liberation of the city. After the war in 1949, Kappa pr proposed a story about Picasso's new ceramic studio in the south of France. But when Kappa returned from his trip, his editors realized that the photographs were not about the studio or of the new pots, but about Picasso. Kappa was clearly more interested in the man and his family than any of the objects. The photographs he took of Picasso and his family have become some of his most famous images of the artist. But it is still extraordinary to see Kappa's work next to the masterpiece of Guernica, one of the most par powerful and largest paintings of the horrors of war. Like Guernica, Kappa's images bring us back to reflect on the war, albeit in a diminutive scale. Both men were engaging with the atrocity of the conflict and making work that would have enormous emotional resonance for the viewers. For Picasso, it was for, for visitors to the Paris Spanish Pavilion at the World's Fair in Paris. And for Kappa, it was readers of the international press. Now, over 80 years later, we've, we lo still look back at them for emotional connection. That jolt of intense feeling that goes deep into the soul while thinking about the strength, 
for survival during the Civil War. It is hard to compare large-scale paintings to black and white prints, and I'm not passing judgment about the value of each medium or of the artists, but suffice to say, we are here today because of a small photograph, and a building and a part of history will now not be demolished or forgotten. With many things related to Kappa, it is always an international effort and a collaboration between friends and strangers. I know the team that has been working hard on the preservation has been in touch with international organizations to gain their support and engagement with the project. Kappa, born in Hungary, made Paris his home. He intensely felt the, the Spanish Republican cause and traveled back and forth from Paris to Spain for the duration of the war. He had to escape France in 1939 because of rising anti-Semitism and nationalism and moved to New York, later returning back to Europe. Picasso, born in Spain, made his home in France. In 1939, Guernica also became a cultural refugee, as I'm sure you all know the story, when it was sent to New York for exhibition to benefit the Spanish Refugee Relief Committee and remained at the Museum of Modern Art in New York at the request of the artist until after the death of Franco when it returned to Spain. I am honored to represent the International Center Photographer from New York here today in Madrid, where we remember the legacy of the Civil War, where hundreds of Americans and international volunteers fought for the Republicans. But what is also extraordinary is that in a list of amazing aspects of today's event, it is not just the only project involving a building that featured prominently in one of Kappa's photographs. In Leipzig, in 1945, Kappa made a photograph of an American soldier who was literally killed before his eyes. The images were published in Life magazine, and that soldier came for Kappa, the last man to die in World War II, as the end of the war came only weeks later. That building suffered neglect in the years under the East German government and was covered in graffiti and slated for demolition. But a group of activists, historical preservationists and historians helped to get a developer to buy and renovate the building. Today, there's a small memorial exhibition on the ground floor recognizing its symbolic fight for Kappa, the American soldiers who fought and for the Allied victory. The effort that has gone into making the building on Peron City a historic site is recognition that photographs matter. When Cornell Kappa created the International Center of Photography in 1974 as a place in part to house and preserve in perpetuity his famous brother's work, he knew that even if there was little value for photojournalism then, the work would be pre appreciated in time. ICP has prospered and photography has become more and more a medium of contemporary life. I find it poignant that the immateriality of photography has been turned inside out and found material in the brick and mortar preservation of the building. What was just silver crystals on paper or digital information on a screen holds deep reserves of history for us to mine. In 1936, when the image was made and first seen, now today and in the future, when scholars and visitors, not even born, look at the image to understand the past. This is the dream that Cornell set for ICP, that Robert could only imagine for his photographs, that they live and continue to evolve in our consciousness. Just like the children in the photograph, we cannot stay inside and mourn the past or fear the future. The sun rises again and again, we must go out and engage with the ever-changing world and our historical memory. Thank you.